Are we aliens on our own planet? It's an intriguing concept proposed by Ellis Silver in Humans Are Not From Earth, a scientific evaluation of the evidence. He highlights unique human attributes, like our sunlight sensitivity, inefficient posture, complex birth process, and substantial environmental footprint, suggesting we might not be native to this planet. He questions our, our adaptability to Earth's ecosystem, particularly our high water needs. So, does all this point to us indigenous to this planet, or does it hint at extraterrestrial origins? Let's delve into into the evidence and unravel the mystery. Watch till the end, you may like the conclusion. Consider our sensitivity to sunlight. Isn't it peculiar? We humans, unlike many Earth-dwelling creatures, can't bask in the sun for too long without suffering consequences. Sunburn, eye damage, even skin cancer. Ellis Silver, in his book Humans Are Not From Earth, muses that this might indicate we evolved under a different type of sun. A sun whose characteristics vary from our own. Intriguing, isn't it? Could we have evolved under a different sun? And what about our susceptibility to chronic diseases? It's no secret that we humans are plagued with a myriad of chronic conditions, a phenomenon that's a bit out of the ordinary. Ellis Silva raises the possibility that these ailments might be more in sync with life on a different planet. Perhaps our bodies are struggling to adapt to Earth's conditions, hence the high prevalence of chronic diseases. It's a thought-provoking proposition, isn't it? Could our bodies be more suited to an extraterrestrial environment? Why do we stand upright when it's biomechanically inefficient? Let's consider this. Our upright posture is a puzzle. It's not the most efficient way to move, and it puts a lot of strain on our lower backs and knees. Yet, it's the way we've evolved. Ellis Silver proposes that this oddity could be because our bodies didn't originally evolve on Earth. Instead, we might hail from a place where this posture is the norm. Could this point to an extraterrestrial influence? And why is human childbirth so difficult? Ponder that for a moment. It's a complex, often dangerous process, even with modern medicine. This seems counterintuitive if we're products of natural evolution on Earth. Most creatures here have a far simpler time. Ellis Silver suggests a fascinating possibility. Could this complexity be better suited to a different gravitational environment? Perhaps one where the strain of childbirth is lessened? It's a thought-provoking idea. Could we have evolved in a different gravitational environment? Have you noticed the significant impact we have on Earth's environment? It's undeniable. Our activities, from deforestation to pollution, are causing drastic changes that are far from subtle. But here's a thought. What if this impact is a reflection of us being, well, alien to this planet? Consider this. Every species on Earth has evolved to fit snugly into their respective ecosystems. They have natural predators and they play a role in maintaining the balance of life. But us? We're a bit of an oddity. We lack natural predators and our population is skyrocketing. The balance is off. Perhaps, as Ellis Silver speculates, these anomalies are not just a sign of poor stewardship. They might be an indication that we are not native to this planet. That we didn't grow up in Earth's backyard, but somewhere else entirely. Could this suggest that we didn't evolve in harmony with Earth's ecosystems? A question worth pondering, don't you think? Why do we need so much water? A question that's been baffling many. You see, humans have a high water requirement, well beyond what many terrestrial species require. Our bodies are about two-thirds water, and we constantly need to replenish it. Now, this might seem normal, but consider this. What if our high water needs are a sign of our origins from a place where water is more abundant or different in composition? It's food for thought, isn't it? Could this align better with an extraterrestrial origin? Have you thought about our unique nutritional requirements? Let's chew on this. Humans need a diverse array of nutrients to thrive, from vitamins and minerals to proteins and carbohydrates. Some of these nutrients are hard to come by on Earth, like vitamin D, which we mostly get from sunlight, rather than food. Then there's our need for omega-3 fatty acids, commonly found in fish, which are not as abundant in terrestrial sources. Could these be more consistent with extraterrestrial environments? Why are we so hairless compared to other mammals? It's a question that stumped scientists for ages. 
Ellis Silver, in his book Humans Are Not From Earth, A Scientific Evaluation of the Evidence, brings up an intriguing proposition. He considers our relatively hairless bodies as a possible marker of an extraterrestrial origin. Imagine a world where the climate doesn't require a fur coat for survival. Could our lack of body hair hint at an evolution tailored to such conditions? Could this suggest an evolution in a different environment? How did we develop such advanced speech capabilities? It's a question that stumps even the brightest minds. Humans possess an intricate system of vocalization, far surpassing any other species on Earth. Ellis Silver proposes that this unusual aptitude might not be a product of terrestrial evolution. Perhaps our ancestors communicated in complex languages under alien skies, shaping our vocal cords for advanced speech. This astounding trait of ours, could it be a vestige of an extraterrestrial past? Could this point to an extraterrestrial evolution or influence? Have you noticed our lack of natural weapons like claws or sharp teeth? Unlike many Earth-based creatures, we humans don't come equipped with significant natural weaponry. No razor-sharp claws, no fangs primed for the kill. It's an interesting conundrum. Ellis Silver posits that this might be a sign that we didn't evolve here on Earth, but rather, we hail from a place where these natural defenses weren't necessary. Could this be inconsistent with natural evolution on Earth? It's a question that certainly sparks the imagination. And what about our sleep patterns? Ellis Silver delves into this fascinating aspect of our lives. He points out that humans require an oddly specific amount of sleep, generally seven to nine hours. This doesn't quite sync up with Earth's 24-hour day. Could it be that our sleep cycles evolved under a different day-night rhythm? Silver proposes that our sleep patterns might be another piece of the puzzle, suggesting our origins could lie beyond Earth. Could they be better suited to a different planetary day-night cycle? So Ellis Silver presents several points and observations that he believes support the idea that humans may not have evolved on Earth. Ellis Silver proposed that human are not from Earth, but from some another planet. But what about the religious perspective about human creation? I just want to end the video with verses from Quran and Bible, which say, Clearly human are not born on Earth, but somewhere else and was sent to Earth. Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, 236. But Satan caused them to slip out of it, and removed them from that condition in which they had been. And we said, Go down, all of you, as enemies to one another, and you will have upon the earth a place of settlement and provision for a time. Bible, Genesis 3, 22, 24. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken.